Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope you had an awesome day. I had an awesome day. Got done with some things that I needed to do today. So uh, hopefully tomorrow I'm going to start making Christmas stuff. I'm going to start making, instead of sausage balls, I'm going to try to make sausage bread. Let's see how that turns out. <laughs> I'm always up for a challenge when it comes to cooking. Sometimes my experiments are pretty bad. Sometimes they're pretty good. We will see. So tonight we are going to do uh, Psalm 67 and 68. And I'm going to read what I shared today about God's faithfulness. But right now, we are going to pray. My name is Charm, and this is my ministry channel, Awesome Treasures and Ministry. And what I like to do on here is share God's truth and share the gospel of Jesus. Those are my two things that I like to do. And I also like to just share or read anything that I feel like the Holy Spirit is reading is drawing me to read and share. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you're on your throne and you are in control, God. There is no God like you. There is nothing that you do not know, God. You are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and magnificent and powerful, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness according to your truth and your word. You are loving and kind and compassionate and caring, God. You are faithful, you are trustworthy, you are forgiving, and you are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we pray for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals, God, to remember the relationship that they once had to return and to repent and to be reconciled. We pray for all the many disasters, many of them um, weather-made, some man-made, some senseless disasters, God. We just, there has been loss of life, so we just lift up these families and these friends to you, God, and we just pray that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, that you would allow the, that you would, that they would feel your presence, God, that the ones that are injured, God, that there would be healing for them, that you would heal them emotionally, physically, and spiritually, God that during these times they would be drawn to you and their needs would be met through the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. There's just been so many, God. Many, many have died from COVID. Many have died from other things, God. We just pray that you would give these families and these friends peace, comfort, and strength during the time of their loss. We pray for people that are recovering from surgeries and that are sick, God. We just uh, pray for healing for them. We pray for strength for them. We pray for strength for their families. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, let's get into God's Word. Let's do Psalm 67. I had already forgotten what I was doing. I'm glad I write things down or I would just be lost without writing things down. Okay, Psalm 67 is an invocation and a doxology to the chief musician on stringed instruments, a psalm of song. 
So this is like a song, a praise and worship song. God be merciful to us and bless us and, and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth, then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. So just some praise, some praise and worship. Uh, calling out for God to be merciful to them and bless them, and then and cause his face to shine upon us. That reminds me of uh, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. And... Um, then the rest of it, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. Um, we really need to praise God more. I think that we lack thankfulness and gratefulness and praise the very most. I think that as Christians as a whole, we think that that belongs in a church setting, but it doesn't belong outside of the church setting, but it does. It, it belongs every day. You know, whatever we're doing, if we're listening to praise and worship music, you know, sing along, give God all the glory, honor, and praise that he deserves. So let's see what it says. The study part of this says, this psalm has a missionary focus. It begins with a reference to the blessing or benediction of Aaron, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The poet repeatedly calls all people and all nations to praise God, the righteous ruler and judge of the earth. God is presented here as the God of all nations, not just the God of Israel. Gratitude for all God has done for us is an appropriate motivation for sharing the gospel with others. The ideal result of God's blessing on his people is that all the ends of the earth should fear or reverence him. So again, gratitude. We need to be grateful. We need to be thankful. We need to praise. We need to lift up God's name. We need to lift up the name of Jesus. We need to lift up the name of the Holy Spirit. We need to praise them all. Okay. So let's move on to Psalm 68, which is a little bit longer. I was going to read Psalm 69, but it is it's pretty long too. So we'll do 69 and 70 tomorrow. Uh, the glory of God in his goodness to Israel, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, a song. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let those also who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, let them rejoice before God. Yes, let them rejoice exceedingly. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Extol him who rides on the clouds. By his name, Yah, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless, a defender of the widows, is God in his holy habitation. God sets the solitary in families he brings out those who are bound into prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a dry land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God. Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. O oh God, send a sent you, O oh God, sent a plentiful rain whereby you confirmed your inheritance. 
when it was weary, your congregation dwelt in it. You, O God, provided from your goodness for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those who proclaimed it. Kings of armies flee, they flee, and she who remains at home divides the spoil. Though you lie down among the sheepfolds, you will be like the wings of a dove covered with silver, and her feathers with yellow gold. When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Zalman. A mountain of God is the mountains of Bashan. A mountain of many peaks is the mountain of Bashan. Why do you fume with envy, you mountains of many peaks? This is the mountain which God desires to dwell in. Yes, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. You have ascended on high. You have led captivity captive. You have received gifts among men, even from the rebellious, that the Lord God might dwell there. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. Our God is the God of salvation, and to God the Lord belong escapes from death. But God will wound the head of his enemies the hairy scalp of the one who still goes on in his trespasses. The Lord said, I will bring back from Bashan, I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that your foot may crush them in blood, and the tongues of your dogs may have their portion from your enemies. They have seen your procession, O God, the procession of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers went before the players on instruments, followed after. Among them were the maidens playing timbrels. Bless God in the congregations, the Lord from the fountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin, their leader, the princes of Judah and their company, the princes of Zebulun and the princes of Naphtali. Your God has commanded your strength. Strengthen, O God, what you have done for us. Believe, because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings will bring presents to you. Rebuke the beasts of the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples, till everyone submits himself with pieces of silver. Scatter the people who delight in war. Envoys will come out of Egypt. Ethiopia will quickly stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. O oh, sing praises to the Lord, to him who rides on the heaven of heavens, which are of old. Indeed, he, sings out, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice, ascribe strength to God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O oh God, you are, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who gives strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. That at 68 was pretty long. So let's see what the, what the study part of this says. Okay, I need a drink. I'm sorry. Oh, that helps a lot. Okay. Uh, verse, I mean, not verse, chapter 68, 4 through 6. God cares for the poor and helpless. He is the father of the orphan and the defender of the widow. He provides homes for the homeless and delivers those in bondage into blessing. Those who rebel against God fail to realize his bountiful care and dwell in a dry land. Verse 4 refers to the Lord as Yah, a shortened form of Yahweh, the covenant name of Israel's God. This familiar expression is found in Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
And so 68, 7 through 10, God revealed his presence with his people by performing great and mighty acts in their behalf. Following the exodus from Egypt, he revealed himself during the journey in the wilderness and through the giving of the law of Mount Sinai. And then we have 68, 18. As Victor, the ascended Christ, gave spiritual gifts to his disciples. In this imagery, a king comes home from battle, leading a triumphant procession as he returns with the defeated captives. And 68, 33 through 35, the presence of this awesome God unto his people, now as in the past, is a marvel to ponder until its reality changes our lives. The psalmist called on others to worship the great and good God, he gives power and strength to his people. Wow, that's just that's just some a feel good message right there. It's just all about God and all about praising Him. And um, us giving Him what He deserves as our God. And what He gives us, He gives us plentiful rain. He you know, he protects us. All right. Well, that leads in perfectly to what I wrote today about God being faithful. So I shared this song uh, called Faithful by Eric Nieder. And I hear this on the radio a lot. That's why I shared this today. Because I hear it on the radio a lot. I didn't even know who sang it. I just looked it up by a line of the lyrics. You can do that on YouTube. If you know exactly the line of the lyrics, then it will take you to that song. It's really pretty cool. So I love this song and message by Eric Nieder. I hear it on the radio nearly every time I get in my car. I love the lyrics of this song. I heard it this morning as I drove to get my labs this morning. This song reminds me of all the times God has been faithful to answer my prayers, my brokenness. He is faithful even when we are not faithful and don't deserve his faithfulness. Even when Sometimes we do not understand the storms or trials we're going through and why, but we, and why, but I have come to realize that the valley brings me closer to Jesus, our shepherd. Many times when we, me and Jesus reach the mountaintop, I can look back and see every step he brought me through. I love praising on the mountaintop, but have learned to praise and be thankful from the valley to the mountaintop. Like even being thankful in the valley, even when you're going through something, just being thankful that you're not alone, that, you know, Jesus is there to help you. God is the God of the valley and the mountain too. I am doing something today that really reminds me of what my sweet mama modeled for us and that is being a, a servant to others in need to give freely of my time and resources to the last three years have had some valleys and mountains but as i make this journey back to god by following jesus i'm never alone god is faithful in all things and has proven this to me so many times even when i was not faithful he was faithful. This Christmas, remember the faithfulness of God in the small things, the medium things, the big things, and in all things. Let him control it all. He has a perfect plan and purpose for us all. We find it by trusting him fully with all we have, like everything we have, like not holding anything back. I felt like God wanted me to share this truth message with someone today. Do not doubt the faithfulness of God. Keep waiting for his perfect plan. Sometimes we have to wait. Um, 
and for his perfect plan, purpose, and timing. God sees and hears all and, and know exactly what we need or knows exactly what we need. Trust him fully. Is Jesus your savior and shepherd today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Come just as you are. Admit that you are a sinner. Ask for forgiveness. Believe that Jesus is God's one and only son that came to save the world through his death, burial, and resurrection. Confess Jesus as your Savior and Lord of your life. Invite him into your heart. Leave the old, receive the new. Okay. Well, it is time for a salvation message. And I have so many. I think I'm going to do this one. Do you know for certain that you have eternal life? And that you will go to heaven when you die? You know, that's a good question. And that's a good thing to know the answer to. And this is North American Mission Boards. Good. Is this good news? Eternal Life Track. That's what this is. God wants you to be sure. The Bible says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13. Another question to consider is, suppose you were standing before God right now and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What do you think you would say? You may not know what you would say, but you can know because God loves you and has a purpose for your life. The Bible states in this way, for God so loved the world. Um, the Bible states it in states it this way, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. God's purpose is that we have eternal life. We receive eternal life as a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. We can live a full and meaningful life right now. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10, 10. We will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. John 14, 3. Eternal life gives meaning to life. Yet our sinful nature keeps us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Thus, our need is to understand our problem. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 We cannot save ourselves, not by work, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2.9 We deserve death and hell. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 It is true that God is holy and just and must punish sin. Yet he loves us and has provided forgiveness for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 The good news is that God has provided for the forgiveness of our sins. God's provision is Jesus Christ. Jesus is God and became man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John 1, 1, 
and John 1, 14. Jesus died for us on the cross, for Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3, 18. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 This is good news, but, but the only way Jesus can affect our lives is for us to receive him. The Bible says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. The choice is ours. Thus, our response is to receive Jesus. We must repent of our sin. Repent, then and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts three nineteen. Repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sin. They should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. Acts 26, 20. Repentance is turning to God through Jesus and away from our sin. It is like making a U-turn. As we turn, we must place our faith in Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith in this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2 8. Faith is not just believing facts about Jesus. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. James 2 19. Faith is trusting in Jesus. It's like taking a trip on an airplane. You will never make the trip you will never make the trip until you trust the plane enough to board it. So three important questions. Does what you have been reading make sense to you? Well, actually, I read it to you. Is there any reason you would not be willing to receive God's gift of eternal life? Are you willing to place your faith in Jesus right now and turn from your sin? The Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10.13 you need to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. Read this prayer and see if it says what you want to say to God. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So call on the Lord in repentance and faith using these similar words of your own, and Jesus will become your Savior and Lord. Welcome to the family of God. If you sincerely prayed this prayer, you have just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure you are saved and have eternal life. As you begin your new journey, and it is a journey, it's a Christianity journey, it is important to realize that Jesus wants to do more than just reside, reside in your life. He wants to be Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. 
Confessing Jesus as Lord is more than just words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Confessing Jesus as Lord means trusting him to direct our lives. Trusting Jesus to direct our lives is like driving down the highway with another person. As long as you're driving, you're in charge. If you realize you don't know the way, but the other person does, you might say, take the wheel and drive. Then the one person is in charge, and the two of you take the route he or she chooses. As evidence of confessing Jesus as Lord, you will want to identify with him. The New Testament way of identification is to confess Jesus publicly and to follow him in baptism and church membership. Your assurance, you know you have eternal life because God keeps his promises. You, rep you repented of your sins, Acts 3.19. You placed your faith in Jesus, Ephesians 2.8-9. God heard your prayer. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10.13. God recorded your commitment. Rejoice that your names may be written in heaven. Luke 10, 20. You need to grow as a Christian. The Bible calls new Christians babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 1. Without certain essentials, ba babies will not develop normally. The church is the new Christian. The church is to the new Christian that what the home and family are to a baby. You identify with your new family by confessing Jesus publicly and by experiencing believers' bad baptism. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Acts 2.41 Attend church Sunday and share with your pastor that you want to be baptized and become a member of the church. Praying is to spiritual life what breathing is to physical life. Breathing must be regular and continuous. The Bible says pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Learn to be specific in your praying. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 God's word is to a new Christian what good food is to a baby. Good food is a daily requirement for proper growth. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. And then it starts talking about quiet time. And there's a little birth certificate in here and everything. Eternal life birth certificate. So, if you did accept Jesus, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. Do grow closer with God by reading His Word every day, by praying and praising. All right, I think I came here to do everything that God wanted me to do tonight. I was a tiny bit late. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to pray. And I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to get off of here. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We just pray, God, that you would give us the boldness to go and to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. That, God, um, we would be the loving compassion for the hurting in this fallen world and that God you would help us to have the discernment to lead us to the people that need help and in Jesus name we pray amen all right let's do God's blessing number 624 through 26 the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Oh, peace is not overrated. It is great. All right. Well, I'm going to get off of here. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. I'm going to be doing some cooking tomorrow for Christmas. I'm quite excited about uh, some things that I'm going to try, some different recipes. So much love and cyber hugs until I see you again. Good night.